Good morning and welcome to Geneva for the AI for Good Global Summit 2025. I want to thank our co-convener uh, here from, from Switzerland. Thank you, Switzerland. And of course, our 53 UN partners. And to all of you online and in person for rising to the challenge, for making the journey and for gathering here at such a pivotal moment. At last year's summit, I stood before you and I declared we are the AI generation. And today, I want to talk about what that really means, especially as artificial intelligence races ahead faster than ever before. In just over a year, the breakthroughs have been absolutely breathtaking. We've gone from generative AI to agents that can operate desktops, book holidays, and complete purchases, avatars delivering live news broadcast, standing in for CEOs sometimes, and influencing millions of followers on social media. The AI market is projected to hit 4.8 trillion US dollars by 2033. Robots can move with animal-like grace. Self-driving vehicles are increasingly on our streets, and I hear there's even a flying car here at Pal Expo. And I actually sat in it this morning, so you might want to give it a try. It's all deeply fascinating, and it can also feel totally disorienting. Amid so much innovation, we're also hearing growing concerns of significant social and environmental cost, of widespread job displacement, and even of existential threats. But ladies and gentlemen, I believe that the biggest risk we face isn't AI eliminating the human race. It's actually the race to embed AI everywhere without sufficient understanding of what that means for people and for our planet. We must be clear-eyed, clear-eyed about the risks we're already observing, of mistaking words produced by an LLM for actual meaning, of forming emotional or operational dependencies or outsourcing consequential decisions to human-like systems that actually are not human at all. We've already observed advanced AI prototypes, prototypes that learned to actually deceive their own developers in test environments in order to preserve their own objectives. I think this is a chilling reminder of how high the stakes can actually get if we build systems that we can't fully control. Among the biggest risks, one that actually keeps me up at night is leaving the most vulnerable further behind. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have 2.6 billion people that have never, ever connected. So for the AI generation, the question shouldn't be who can build the most powerful models fastest. I think our question must be, what are we doing to make sure that AI works for all of humanity? What is our role in ensuring that AI empowers those that have none? How will we bend the arc of AI towards justice? For the AI generation, speed and scale are only part of the story. Our race has to be towards a deeper, more nuanced and shared understanding of AI. That means upskilling upskilling ourselves enough to understand the risks and reap the benefits. It means making AI governance inclusive so that everyone can seize the opportunities before us while protecting the most vulnerable. So let's take a moment. Let's take a moment to pause, to breathe, and to reflect on what comes next. We often hear that AI is a mirror, that it reflects human ingenuity, 
but also reveals our deepest biases and flaws. It reflects the values encoded in training data, and it can result in unpredictable outcomes, no matter how good the designer's intentions are. The generation who will never know a world without AI, well, they've already been born. And it is actually with them that the greatest opportunity lies. An opportunity that starts with skills. Students, teachers, technicians, policymakers, they all need the skills to understand and to question the systems that they increasingly interact with. We need to teach, especially the young people who are growing up with AI right now, we need to teach them how to be able to discern between performance and understanding, between fluency and truth, and between correlation and cost. As users and consumers of artificial intelligence, we can't, we can't adjust model weights ourselves, but what we can do we can actually fact check. We can craft better and more careful inputs. We can analyze outputs critically. And we can demand that these systems be designed responsibly and transparently. When the United Nations Secretary General visited the ITU last year, he urged us to make sure that AI doesn't stand for advancing inequality. Our AI Skills Coalition is answering that call by expanding access to AI education and training together with more than 50 global partners. Being part of the AI generation means contributing to this whole of society upskilling effort from early schooling to continued lifelong learning. Teachers have an essential role, but so do journalists, researchers, entrepreneurs, engineers, and policymakers. And I look forward to sharing more about what we're doing on AI skilling at our session tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, if we want artificial intelligence that truly works for everyone, skills are just one piece of the puzzle. There is a need and there's also a huge opportunity for AI governance, a governance that includes everyone. In countries across the world, AI is already reshaping economies, jobs, public services. At the same time, too many nations still don't have their own AI strategy. When researchers mapped the world's AI data centers, they found that only 32 countries, 32 countries, had so-called compute power, while more than 150 did not. A survey of ITU's own membership revealed that 85% of respondents had no AI policy or strategy in place. So these governance gaps are not just missed opportunities for individual nations. Taken together, they pose a global risk, a risk of deepening, deepening existing divides and opening new ones. And that's why our AI governance dialogue on Thursday aims to bring all countries to the table, to share experiences in contending with these risks and also looking at how we can leverage opportunities. Because artificial intelligence is more meaningful when it's locally grown. Without that relevant context, it does risk failure. For example, in West Africa, smallholder farmers lost trust in an app that was an image recognition app. Because this app kept misdiagnosing livestock, because it was trained on data of foreign breeds, and so this misdiagnosis kept happening, and the farmers decided not to use the app. And I think governance is how we can ensure that AI reflects local needs, 
that it reflects local needs while aligning with development priorities. It's how we safeguard our shared digital future, guided by the outcomes and the action lines of the World Summit on the Information Society, and also further strengthened by that Pact of the Future and the Global Digital Compact that was adopted by UN member states last year. These documents contain our shared principles, but we also need shared technical language to implement them and bring them into being. That's where standards comes in. It's the standards opportunity. And the word standards actually appears no less than 16 times in the Pact of the Future and the Global Digital Compact. And that's because standards are essential. They're essential in helping to translate the values that we agree on as a global community into real world systems. Systems that are interoperable, that create economies of scale, that embed fairness and safety, and ultimately build trust. That's why ITU, ISO, IEC, and many other partners in this room are leading a global, open, consensus-based approach to AI standards. And that's why this year's summit is dedicating a full day on Friday to AI standards. Because if we want AI that serves everyone, we need standards that include everyone. To date, ITU's open and collaborative standards community has published over 150 AI-related standards. And we have another 100, more than 100, currently under development. Standards should not be construed as constraints on innovation. They actually form the foundation of meaningful progress that the AI generation is building right now, today. So that technology can actually benefit everyone everywhere. And that's exactly what brings us here, to this moment, to this summit, AI for Good, right here in Geneva, the home of the AI generation. This is where technologists, researchers, regulators, journalists, students, artists, diplomats, entrepreneurs, and of course, our UN partners have gathered. And we've gathered here to build a deeper understanding, one that this moment really demands whether it's through the innovation factory, where startups are pitching transformative AI solutions in things like healthcare, education, environment, and so much more, or through our Robotics for Good Youth Challenge, where young people from underserved communities are building robots to tackle real-world problems from things like waste management to disaster response. Or through our AI standards exchange, where experts have come together to turn principles into action. So ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you again, what does it mean to be part of the AI generation? It means recognizing that the future of AI is not predetermined. It means accepting, accepting our shared responsibility to bend it towards justice. It means refusing to leave the most vulnerable behind. It means building the skills, building the skills to understand, shaping the governance to guide, and setting the standards to level the AI playing field. It means coming together right here, right now, to drive AI progress towards universal values and global goals. We are more than the AI generation. We are the generation that is determined, ladies and gentlemen, determined to shape AI for good. So no matter how fast technology moves, Let us never stop putting AI at the service of all people and our planet. And let's do this 
Let's do this together. Thank you very much, and welcome to AI for Good. Thank you.